Hello, my friends. Good afternoon. This is your boy Turgon, the grumpy ass dwarf. And today I am making a video for you. I'm going to try to structure it such that it does not exceed 20 minutes. So let's see how I do. Um, we're going to go through and we're going to talk about the current state of the server. I'm going to tell you about kind of what's going on and then give you a little bit of an expectation as to what the cadence of my next videos will be. Uh, as I've been tending to post these on Wednesdays or record them on Wednesdays. And today is a Monday. Uh, then we're going to go through and talk a little bit about some ring ability tips and tricks, um, gear and talent differentiations between fighting light side versus dark side, and I'm going to use my Aragorn as an example. Uh, and then a couple other tips just to kind of uh, what I do to keep my conscription post going, and then we'll do a wrap up. All right, so without further ado, the current state of the server is complete chaos. Um, the last time we were talking, it was looking awfully a lot like we were going to take Rivendell, and we uh, got hit with an unfortunate set of circumstances um, shortly thereafter um, I posted that video where um, somebody got ported from across the map from the Lothlorien team, somewhere right in around where I'm showing my screen now. And since they got ported right behind our lines in this trench here, which, by the way, trench warfare over here was so much fun. Um, so since they got ported over there, we couldn't fight them on multiple fronts. And they eventually, you know, as you can see, pushed us all the way back to the tunnel. This isn't the tunnel. This is the tunnel. Uh, we own the other side of this tunnel. And, 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 and we seem to be holding steady there. Um, so they really defended Rivendell tooth and nail. And now they're working their way back towards their capital, Karis Galathon. And right now, what is happening is we're going to defend this. And by we, I mean Erebor, Rohan, and Variag to some greater or lesser extent. They're already trying to get over here from the critical crossing. Um, so this ought to be a lot of fun over the next couple of days and if you haven't noticed we have an end of season cutoff and there's a timer counting down so uh, we have 53 hours left in the season and it's been a nuts season and I could spend a lot longer than three minutes talking to you about everything that's happened so far in the season you can review um, one of my old videos for that information but I'm recording this on a new channel so I guess you don't have access to those by clicking on my name, but I'll go through that later. I'll do a season recap um, after the season ends for sure. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on over here. Um, there's some potential for the, there was some thoughts that Gondor might be trying to go for, for the ring. Um, there's somewhere down here or something in this area, potentially going across to head for DG, but um, it looks like that's not going to happen. There's just not a lot of time left. Um, so it'll be interesting. We're actually going to be attacking um, Angmar up here shortly. Their capital. It's somewhere here on my map. There it is. So we're going to hit this and see what we can do with that. That ought to be fun. So yeah, that's what the current state of the server is at this point in time. All in all, I mean, there's some other stuff going on out west. It looks like... Um, Linden was able to recapture their capital and they've also recaptured for Linden. And it looks as though that they were making a play for Anuminas, but I'm not sure what's going on out there right now because of fog of war. So I can't say what's going on and I'm not talking with those people anyway. So um, some of them might come there. So it's entirely possible Lothlorien could recapture their capital and then Arnor loses theirs and they don't get the season reward anyway. And that would be fine with me. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. And, uh, I'll be doing a video, I'll try to do another video maybe tomorrow around the same time um, to give you another update on the current state of the server and what may have changed between um, today and, and, and tomorrow. And then, uh, like I said, uh, after the season wraps up on Wednesday, then I'll do a video that just recaps everything and it'll be really fun. 
it's been a fun season. So next item on the agenda here is to talk through ring abilities. I just redid my ring today, as you can see. It doesn't reset for a long time. And I, I had it set to do for like a lot of sweeping. I had effortless sweeping maxed out. I had experience sweeping maxed out. Um, and I changed it up for a couple of reasons. Um, and this kind of segues into my tips for keeping your conscription post going agenda item, because I decided as part of my, my recent ring update, I had one point in the harvest and then I maxed, I decided to max it out. And so I'll, I'll, I'll talk through that when I get to that agenda item in a little bit. Uh, but this is what my ring is looking like and the last few points that I'm going to get between now and the end of the season are more than likely going to just go into effortless sweeping. I'm not really sweeping for experience at this point. It's the end of the season. I'm not going to get any levels doing that. I'm too busy fighting and my barracks aren't um, stocked enough to really, you know, be able to both PVP and sweep a lot. So it just doesn't make any point, make any sense to have any points in experience sweeping. Um, powerful sweeping. I have seen, you know, this show up in reports. So I'm going to, I maxed it to see what kind of a difference it might make um, as we're doing stuff like in defensive postures and, and whatnot. Um, abundant force, I just consider this to be a requirement. Um, I always have this maxed as soon as I can in the season so that I can conscript faster. Uh, the dexterity is good for commander speed, abundant power for commander physical damage, and then march speed and reposition speed. So those are all what I consider requirements as well, especially when you're playing a faction like Erebor and your units are just ridiculously slow. Might be able to get away with skimping out on a couple of points when you're playing a, a faction that has faster units like Rohan. And I maxed out uh, Dominance finally <laughs> the last few days of the season, and I only just today put the last point into Dominance so that I can have a 216 tile cap, which is funny. And I also maxed out Battle Lines as well. Experience is maxed out. So that's what I've done with my ring. And this is what I this is how I'm gonna what I call like my fighting build because I'm gonna be fighting between now and the end of the season, and the conscription enables, you know, more fighting. This could potentially be something that helps out um, in fights. This obviously helps in fights because I use commanders that do commander damage, like Dwalin, Aragorn. Um, those are two of my bigger commanders right now that I'm using. Uh, Treebeard as well. Although his commander damage is nowhere near as significant as Aragorn's or, or Dwalin's, but also his gear isn't. So we can check that out in a little bit. So that's what's up with the ring talents. If I was going to do, um, you know, more sweeping, I would put it points in the experience sweeping. Even the focus sweeping, because that extra re, uh, grain um, would be huge, would be really, really helpful. If you're going to do mocking, then obviously you're going to want points in these three. So that's just a couple of, of thoughts and ideas regarding ring talents. Now, I'm going to skip to keeping the barracks going. So my barracks has pretty much always got something going on, as you can see. So I got 35 minutes left on my Iron Warriors. Once they're done cooking, I'm gonna probably cook some more War Rams here. Um, I got both of my archers cooking right now between the Sharpshooters and the Sentinels so that I can potentially bring my Haldir and my uh, Gandalf the Grey back into play. They got knocked out yesterday, fighting in the tunnels vigorously against Lothlorien. You hit one mismatch and you can lose all your stuff. If, you're, if, you're, if your army gets wiped in one battle, then probably half your units are dead. Uh, and then you got to make them again. Uh, I could certainly use some more knights as well. Although I have Aragorn up uh, at Karn Dune at the moment. <clears throat> so what, some tricks that I do to keep my conscription post going. Um, some people like to only conscript when they can conscript like the maximum number of units. Like for example, the maximum number of units I can conscript for, um, 
like sharpshooters and sentinels is 5,000 right now because my conscription post is maxed out. As you can see, I only made 3,000 of each, 3,050 technically for the sentinels. Uh, I'll make less than that. Um, it reduces the amount of time that you're going to be conscripting stuff. It reduces the amount of resources you need to spend to make them. And it keeps them on the pipeline. And I think that keeping stuff on the pipeline is more important than making as many as you possibly can all the time. Um, yeah, and in order to do that, I like to, to gather. So I have a commander just basically sitting up here, gathering out of this. This is my best food tile. It's a 230. I have no 260 and no, no 300 tiles. I don't have any. I don't care. I don't need them. I've proven that this season. Um, I, I don't need those things. I, I like them. I would love to have them, but I don't need them. And and I prefer, you know, I'm a pretty selfless player. I let my teammates have that kind of stuff. I, I get by without it. It's just fine. If I have a 300 tile, I'll mock with it a little bit, but maybe only for a couple of days. And then I'll switch my ring abilities back over to fighting um, or something else. So, I mean, that's really what all I use my AP for at this point occasionally I'll save up the 10 points that I need to do a long march or a quick march, but I really rarely do that as well. So that's really all I use my AP for is just for gathering, especially this season as Airborne. As you can see the numbers across the top of my screen, my food production is low. It's under 40K an hour. It's not good. So I need to supplement that somehow. Um, so that's how I do that. I just gather a whole bunch. So... I hope that's helpful for you, just to give you some ideas about different ways that you can keep your conscription post going um, throughout the day so you have more troops. You know, if, if you make a thousand troops, by the time that thousand troops is done cooking, you could finish gathering a couple of times and then have food to make 2,000 troops next time if you don't have the resources for it when you make that thousand. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just keeping troops rolling in. Whether it's a thousand or it's five thousand, just keeping them rolling in, they're gonna build up. And by the time one conscription finishes, you could have the resources to to do more. If you don't have the resources to do it then, you could have them later. It builds up over time. Um, you can use stuff to buff your your resource gathering. I do that every day as well. Every day that um, why isn't this thing? There we go. You see these are grayed out. I buy them every day. It's two hundred gems. It's not a lot of gems. Right. So I buy these every day. And usually what I like to do is pop them before bed. So then I'm getting that 20 percent benefit while I sleep. And then I wake up the next morning and I have the most resources I possibly could have. The same thing applies when you get those um, those limited gift packs that have it's like five dollars and you get the eight hour 20 percent resource buffs. I get that every week, too. It helps. You know, every little bit helps, especially when you're resource um, strapped in a season like this and you're selfless and don't go, you know, farming like crazy to jack up your your resource numbers as much as humanly possible. Um, so I, I try to find ways around that. And that's just the kind of player that I am. And maybe you're a different kind of player and I'm not going to judge you for the way you play. And I hope that you don't judge me for the way that I play. All right, so that's kind of some tips to keep your t your conscription post going. Uh, we talked about your ring ability tips and tricks. So the last thing I really wanted to talk through today was um, my Aragorn. And, and this is, you can apply similar concepts to other commanders, which is why I'm only going to focus on him per se. Um, but we're going to just talk about... Aragorn because uh, I like him versus dark side more than versus light side. And let me just tell you the way that I use him first. Um, I use Aragorn versus dark side as a scout. I don't care what I attack. I don't care if it's orcs, trolls, Urukai, evil men. I don't care. He's my scout. He will smash it and he'll either do very, very well himself or he'll at least bludgeon you real hard so that the next commander that comes through is going to finish you. I am completely fearless fighting dark side with Aragorn using this setup. Uh, so this battle axe is great for inc increasing commander damage. 
The Superior Hauberk, as discussed in many other videos, is fantastic for reducing burn damage. It buffs the army defense by 15 base stat, which is huge. And it gives him more might. And then, of course, the Full Helm Blinding Barrier that increases Knight's focus, burn, and poison damage received by 60%. And then the Heath Lane that uh, increases you know, his might focus, army HP, all good stats. And then also with the mend um, trait, he gives him a bit of healing. He does about 12,000 healing per, you know, prolonged 10 round battle, um, which can be really helpful. In terms of talents, this is how I have him configured to fight dark side. And essentially the only thing that I would change versus light side is to take this point out <laughs> and put it into hidden air. <laughs> just to get a little bit more skill damage out of him um, because you're not going to get any benefit from this when you're fighting a light side opponent because light side doesn't have orcs or urukai so you're, you're not going to ever that's never going to be it's just kind of a wasted talent point when you're fa facing light side and since it's only 20 gems to reset it's really you know not a big deal to just reset these things pretty much at will depending on who your opponent's going to be. I'm about to fight, you know, at Karn Dune, which is a dark side opponent, so I have him in this dark side configuration. If I bring him south to help fight Lothlorien, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this chest off, and I'm going to put this one on that reduces focus damage by 50%, pretty much. And that coupled with, um, you know, the, the blinding barrier here, it's going to give him 110% focus damage reduction I pretty much just snipe Galadriel's with him, with, with the knights, because he just mitigates all of her focus damage. The only thing I have to watch out for is that Galadriel isn't running around with like 7,000 guards of the tower, because guards of the tower counters cavalry units. So um, I'll lose a lot of, of knights <laughs> um, running into something like that. Um, but Galadriel herself is completely mitigated in that scenario. And that's really the best use that I have for him versus light side at this point in time with this setup. I have seen other people fight with Aragorn with different configurations fairly effectively, you know, using archers and, and different ta setups. Um, but I try to just kind of set things and leave it and try to keep things simple so that um, I don't have to do too much monkeying around. And I think this is the way that I like him the best. Just a couple of, of thoughts and ideas regarding that. You can certainly apply them to other commanders. My Dwalin at this point is pretty much set and leave it. I just got his battle as twin axes up to two gold stars. Um, so this really helps increase his damage. And then he also has the negative 60% focus damage reduction. So he's good for Scaladriel. And he's also got Madness Immunity for the first three rounds, which is good versus Galadriel. And I use Dwalin with all Ram Riders, so that Army Defense Mounted Unit plus 15 base stat is utilized there. And what I've also fallen in love with with Dwalin, just talking about him briefly here, I just started experimenting with his Ram Riders having the counter blow and his damage, you know, between the Dwalin's commander damage and the ram damage, it's really strong. I really like this configuration on him a lot, especially with this tandem of having, you know, one command of guardians with the shield training, as well as guards of the tower with the shield training, that negative 20% damage received stacks on the war rams. So the war rams, have a tremendous amount of damage reduced, prolonging their ability to survive and fight in battle. And it's it's really strong. Um, you know, here playing in this Tactics Evolved campaign. On server 54, fellowship is serve. I hope that this video um, you found to be insightful in some way. Feel free to leave a comment um, if you would like below in the video thing or reach out to me if you have any feedback or suggestions um, either in game or in discord 
Thanks so much for taking the time to watch, and I hope the rest of your day treats you well.